What was the relationship like with your dad? This podcast, Military Veteran Dad, is brought to you by the Business of Fatherhood, an effort by me to help you become a better dad. By helping dads create a lasting feeling of change on the inside, help them grow through generational trauma, and by redefining the definition of living. There is more to life than being alive. To find out more information about this, head on over to bencloy.com or check out the Business of Fatherhood podcast on any and all platforms. Dory 1, this is Fire Team Delta. Dad's coming home. Welcome to the Military Veteran Dad Podcast, where it is our mission to bring every dad home. I am your host, Ben Colloy. I'm a United States Marine veteran, husband, and a father. We will bring authentic conversations to inspire action in your life so we can close the gap between the dad you are today and the dad you want to be tomorrow. This is the Military Veteran Dad Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to Military Veteran Dad. This is episode 170, Military Veteran Dad. This is the four-part series, wrapping up our transition series, which is accumulation of my transition advice, accumulation of advice I've learned from interviews on this podcast, and bring it to here, compartmentalize in four parts. If you haven't listened to any of the previous three parts, go back, pause this, go back, listen to part one, two, and three, and then catch up with this one, because there is a sequential order, and this one will make sense but the other ones will build on and this one will make more sense when you listen to that. I am also announcing a little bit of a shift that this will be the last episode of the summer. Most likely what we're going to do here is bring it back in September. Potentially I'm putting everything kind of on pause for the summer to really figure out exactly where I want to put some energy. There might be some shifts coming. There might be some different new strategies, but I do know that I need to pause. I need to put this podcast in the back burner for a little bit I know that there's plenty of content out there for you to listen to, and I appreciate you tuning in every week. So make sure you stay and follow me on Instagram at Ben underscore Kaloy. Stay updated with me there. Or you can check in with me and friend me on Facebook, fb.me forward slash Benjamin Kaloy or Benjamin dot Kaloy, or you can always follow me on LinkedIn. So make sure you check out all my socials, stay up to date, whatever I do got coming up. But this will be the last episode of the summer. I know I was previously going to keep doing them, but I need to put a pause. I need to put some focus on some other things. And this is what had to get paused. So done it before and the results have always worked out. So I know I'm making the right decision here, but without further ado, let's get started with our part four series of how to transition out of the military. And for part four is titled your best life. So a couple different things here as I was preparing to record this episode. This episode is essentially a big, giant reminder that family is your legacy. It's, it's the, the theme of this entire podcast. It, it, why this podcast exists. This podcast has a mission, has a focus. All of these different things are tied into military and family is your legacy. So when I think about family is your legacy, the first part that you have to know, think about, and plan when you're thinking about your transition is your priorities. So what do I mean? If you listen to podcasts, this will not be a surprise. And essentially it comes down to looking at your priorities and your commitments you've made in life. You've brought kids in the world, maybe. Your commitment is to keep them alive. You've made a commitment to some branch of the military service for a period of time, and that time is now ending. Notice it's ending. You may have been part of different organizations. You might have been volunteering in different organizations. And now maybe a big move is into play. Maybe all these things are getting wrapped up. Maybe they're getting a bow put on them and they're getting closed. But there is still one commitment that most likely will be there for a long time. And hopefully if you've done your marriage right, your partnership right, that it will be there for a long time. And remembering that no matter what you're doing in this transition service, your military commitment is all secondary because the commitment to your wife, your partner, that is the one that is to the end of the time. Until you're eight feet under, that is the commitment that is the most important. Every other commitment, think about it, every other commitment you make in this world will be secondary to that one. That no other commitment that you do, nothing in your life will last as long as that commitment. Everything you do in your life, your decisions need to be in that priority. Notice I didn't start with kids because at some point they leave and you're still left with this original commitment. 
So if I'm thinking about priorities, it has to be family first as a bucket. But then your partner, your wife, your kids, and then your career. Most people that transition out of the military, they take a copy and paste approach of their military service. They try to plug it into the corporate world and they just overlook all these things on the side that is their family. In many cases, maybe it works out, but there's a lot more stories where it does not work out, where that time credit card that I've talked about so many times in the podcast becomes bankrupt and that time credit card no longer can hold on to itself. And so with that said, remembering that this is the fundamental theme of your best life, that you will not have any best life if your priorities got out of whack and you lose the thing or you lose sight of what matters most, that you lose sight of these things that are important, but you forget that they are important. So that is your reminder to put your family first and especially your wife and partner first. And one of my most popular advices to give is when you walk through the door, make sure you're kissing your wife first to signal to your kids who is the most important person in this family, and that is them. And now you love your kids, but you love her more. Understand where you feel alive. That is our next topic. So many times as human beings, especially the military, because we're told to follow orders, we're told to kind of be robots, for lack of a better term. Marine Corps acknowledged using the word inventory. These ideas of knowing where we feel alive is something where you might feel alive when you, or you might have this false pretense that adrenaline is where you feel alive because there's a lot of moments in the military that you would feel a lot of adrenaline. And so tying it back to life, adrenaline is a good indicator. And there are times where adrenaline, like jumping out of an airplane might make you feel alive. But what I'm talking about is where you just feel connected. Those moments that feel like time stop. Those moments where the tasks that you're doing, you get lost in. The tasks that you're doing, you no longer pay attention to the clock because the time just flows through. There were many times in my transition and in the years that followed that I lost sight of how to find life. My main message now is there's more to life than being alive. Most people know how to make a living, but only a few taught how to live. When I say how to live, that is not about going doing crazy things. That is about where to find life. And one of my most simplest exercises is going into the wilderness, taking your socks off, taking your shoes off, and using all five senses to feel what's around you. Smell what you smell. Feel what you feel. Hear what you hear. See what you see. Let those senses remind you of how life is abundant. This is what you need to understand when it comes to knowing where you feel alive because life is abundant. And if you can find the channel where your life feels abundant and life is abundant and there's never a scarcity mindset attached to where you are living, how you live, this will be the juice that allows your transition just to fly, soar, and climb in the altitudes. Understanding this is such a key concept with everything that we talk about. If you are a 20-year veteran and you're transitioning out or anything above and you've essentially got a pension, one thing that I've never really successfully got traction on, but I talk about it anytime I get a chance, is talking about a essentially a 20-year military retirement revolution that I wish this would be the time, especially for family men, that they would just turn it off. Take your pension, buy a couple years of time, save for it if you need to, but let your wife flip the script, let her go out in the world, you be a stay-at-home dad. Let that time credit card just get fully back up. Invest that time, not have to worry about money, but just focus on connection, focus on adventure, focus on conversation, focus on understanding of who your kids are. There are so many times where they don't know you and you don't know them. I wish more people took this time to build their best life by actually letting go of a lot of the crap that they've accumulated, a lot of the things that your ego tells you you need or that a man needs to do. Your wife is probably itching to go out there and make a mark on her own. She's been holding down the fort for a long time, and that's probably something she signed up for, she supported, and she was there. But give her this opportunity. Maybe she doesn't take it. That's fine. But give her the opportunity to go out there and fly. Give your partner the chance to go design whatever their life has been put on hold 
because your military service. There's a lot that goes into that. Create a space where this idea could actually grow within it. There is this idea for the next part that I wanted to talk about with how to design your best life is this idea of how much did they pay to give up on your dreams? So uh, something that, I mean, even in this case, it happened to me, but although they didn't pay me much, is you transition out of the military. And when you transition out of the military, you find a job. Maybe you land like a great job, making 130000 a year. But maybe you also had that idea that you wanted to pursue. And you didn't. Now what? And you're like, I just got paid $130,000. I've struck it. I'm a millionaire. Maybe. And maybe that's exactly what you want. But there's going to be a moment where you have to answer and say, you know what? I was paid $130,000 to give up on my dream. And that's a thought that I have to live with the rest of my life. Hmm. That's a hard one. I see that going around on Instagram all the time because George Clooney is quoted as saying it. And in that moment, you have to realize, like, what do I want? What is it that I truly want out of life? And ask yourself, are you paying the price? Are you settling for easy? Are you settling for comfort? Are you settling for this drug called a paycheck? And there's nothing wrong with collecting a paycheck the most important part of whatever choice you do on the other side of transitioning is understanding again, the lay of the land, how many lanes of life are you turning down? Do you understand the lanes that you have to choose from? Like we talked about in part three, that life is a million lanes wide. And again, you have to live with this idea, how much they give you to give up on your dreams, because that's really what you're doing in this case. If you do something, And maybe you don't have that dream yet. But the moment you have it, then you also have to say, like, how much? I mean, I'm guilty of that. It wasn't until I lost my job and pushed out until I was able to push into my dream. So thinking about all of this, putting it in a nice bow, wrapping it up, making it sound good, your best life is the entire process of life. Now, the reason why I now change my message to there's more to life than being alive is because most of us define us is this biological pattern of life. We go to work, we come home, we take care of the kids, we go to bed, we go to bed tired, we wake up, we go to the gym maybe, we go back to work. That is not being alive. That's being in a routine. Routines do not create more life. They just create more routines. And there's a podcaster named Andy Vercelli. You might have heard of him. He's done 75 hard challenges over the last few years. Or and he's also the inventor of it. He's popularized that, or I first heard this idea from him, is that there's only difference between a rut and a grave is a depth. Your patterns could potentially be the rut. And the rut, gone around enough times, will be your grave. And it's one of those things that incapacitates men to dream of their best life, to even see those million lanes wide like I talked about last week. So understanding how we can rectify this, change it, but then also how you can have access to all these different things on the other side. And to wrap up this final part for our series, I kind of want to do a couple catch-all different things that I've learned that are almost a must that you pay attention to, that you look for, and that you also go through as well. First up on that list of catch-all is GI Bill, most popular benefit in the military, and it's one of the most popular reasons people join the military. And now, since I left the military, it's such it's been expanded. It's got a lot more legs on it. You can pass it down to your kids now. It's this entire vehicle of an asset almost that you can pass on. So when I got out, I immediately started using it. And went to college. Now the downside of what I did was I immediately started going using it and going to college because I didn't fully understand what I wanted to do. I was just burning through credits. Now, the one thing that I could go back and do differently is focus on trying to find a way into a system like a larger school through the back doors. So what I didn't do is in Wisconsin here, there was at the time a two-year school where I could get a degree. And if you went and got a degree from these two-year schools, which are cheaper, closer, that you automatically get a back door into the larger schools. And I didn't know that. 
I might not even gone to the military had I known that. So understanding that there's ways around making sure you get the most bang, but also for the most buck. Also, something that I didn't know and didn't do effectively was picking the right degree and understanding that you don't actually need to know the degree or even want to pursue the degree when you apply for it. So in my example, I applied for the UW-Madison and I applied for the electrical engineering degree. Now, coming from a Marine Corps guy, not having a lot of fancy college, not having a fancy AP classes in high school, having four years in between, I wasn't accepted. But what I found out after, and I didn't follow up on it and pursue it, was I could have applied to the Department of Agriculture and had any of the degrees within agriculture. And once I'm in the system, I could easily switch my major. So don't just set your bar, because the GI Bill pays for it. So you have these opportunities to go to some of these really nice schools but then also have it covered as well. So spend time, don't just pull the trigger, spend time talking to different people, spend time when you just get a door closed, don't just accept it and then go around it. There's a lot of different areas in the GI Bill. There's different things like going to get a pilot's license, so many different niches within the GI Bill. And the best thing I can offer is for advice, talk to the the student reps on those campuses if you have access or if you're close enough, because almost every large campus has a collection of student veterans that know the system. They know how to make it work for you. They know the ins and outs. They know what not to do. And that's kind of like a catch-all advice as well. Find people ahead of you that already know the things that you could potentially trip on. And always remember, you don't die in the battle because you missed the big things. You missed because and you die because you missed the tripwire. And many times in those college applications, there's little tripwires that you never know you tripped and then you don't get in. So understanding that the GI Bill is a big nugget. Don't just waste it. Don't just start using it. Use it with intention. Use it with a plan and use it with focus. Next thing is something that's way underestimated. And I would almost recommend, depending on where your transition is at, this immediately should be your number one priority the moment you get out, especially if you have any type of terminal leave on the other side where you're paid essentially, do whatever you want back home. Use this time to get to your VA, get a checkup, get a basic evaluation, because here's the nutshell. I'm not a VA expert. I'm only a veteran who's gone through the process that you have an entire military record of things that may have happened to you. Some of the things that I got disability for were very simple, like PT injuries sometimes. And those PT injuries were documented. Getting them documented on the other side in a different system while there's very little time passed between your military and your civilian life now, getting it on record and then we having this documentation, this is what it looked like at the very end of my military service because maybe it doesn't even hurt yet. So maybe you had a shoulder injury and it got healed, it got treated and it was perfectly fine, but you're 50 years old now and your shoulder starts hurting and you're like, damn it, damn military injury started coming back. Well, you probably had 40 years of life between then. And they're most likely not going to believe you that that's connected to the military. So understanding and getting it documented right on the other side, because there's a couple different things that come with this. Is sometimes you can get a disability rating without even thinking that you have any issues with being disabled. The other reason to get this is any disability fund rating, I believe it's 10% or more, gets you a VA funding fee waived for your VA home loan. So something as simple as going to get your VA checkup, submitting a standard claim of whatever they evaluate you as, getting that, you might end up at 10%. You just saved yourself $3,000 if you decide to use the VA home loan. You also, by the way, can get access to VA healthcare then. Getting in the system allows them to know you. Part of the process when we talk about veteran suicide, the VA only knows where like 30% of the veterans live. Now, that's not 100% accurate, but it's really low, like scary low. So get in the system. Let them be able to talk to you. So that way, if you need to be communicated on whatever's coming, some change, some information, or they just need to check on you, this is the process. Or if you're having those dark days on the other side, you have your information. It's in the system. They can talk to you, and they can get you the help that you need. I already kind of hinted on the VA home loan, but understand that the VA home loan is this weirdly amazing tool that I've only scratched the surface on. And if you really want to scratch the surface on, there's a lot of different ways from real estate investing. You can actually use it to 
You can actually use it to get started with some real estate investing, owning a duplex and different things. I'm not an expert there either, but there's plenty of content. We even had David Pierre on the podcast way back in episode 113. So go check that out if you want to go check it out as well. So understanding the GI Bill is not something to take lightly either, but understand that it's a resource, it's a tool. And like I said, starting with the VA claim, there's a lot of nuances to it. Also as a PA or a PSA, make sure you get the right lender. That we have so many different lenders for VAs and they're often targeted to veterans because it's a way for them to scam us or make money. I can't tell you how much mail I get in the mail from junk trying to take my mortgage. And so if you're in Wisconsin, I can't help but recommend the episode we did way back in the beginning with Bob Martin, way back in episode 28. So that's another one to go back and check. And he is Fairway Mortgage here in Wisconsin. Fairway exists in a lot of other different states, but you can also, he's licensed in the state of Wisconsin, so you can check him out and hands down recommend him. You won't get a better mortgage guy. And he's got an amazing story of almost taking his own life early on and how his life has changed and unfolded since. Now, this was not a comprehensive series. This was a comprehensive series on you. There are mountains of layers on top of this. I decided to take this entire series and do something different with it. I wanted to talk about the things that people don't talk about in transition series because often in transition, they're talking about LinkedIn, they're talking about networking, they're talking about career resumes, and all that stuff is good. It is a step in the process. But this, what we just covered in four parts, is not covered anywhere else on the internet. I've been doing this for a long time, and people do not talk the way that I talk about this topic, about how to understand yourself, how to find yourself, how to live your best life, and making sure you live it on your terms. That is, There's so many different lessons. If you listen to the podcast from my life that you probably have learned as well, compartmentalizing it here in this episode has been... I objective, and now I'm going to put a bow on it and consider it complete. Well, that is all I have to complete this series. I hope you have an amazing rest of your summer, and I'll bring the next update, no matter what happens, around September 1st. So make sure you like, subscribe, wherever you're listening to this podcast on. We're on all the podcast players, so make sure you stay tuned. Like and subscribe so you can stay up to date. And like I said, I'll bring you an update to figure out what exactly is going on with Military Veteran Dad around September 1st when the summer is shut down. Kids are almost back in school, theoretically, around that time frame. And that'll be the best time to tell you exactly what's going on with this and some future missions that I have going on. Thank you so much for continuing to support this podcast while we are in the off season here. Make sure you please share it. There's enough content out here to change Dad's life. So, don't just wait for me to come back. Make sure you share this podcast with someone who needs it because there's a lot of value here, just a lot of hard work into it as well. And also, if you want to show any support to this podcast of appreciation for what this has done, I also have a donation link if you want to donate to the cause because it does take money to run this podcast. You can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Ben Colloy, and there's also a link for that down in the show notes. Thank you so much again, and we'll be back on the other side of summer.